Hey guys, um, in this video we're going to be looking at how to make a moulded door using VCarve Pro. So what we're going to do is we're going to very quickly go through the whole thing from scratch, but just to give you something as reference. If I go up to here and show you one that I've already designed, so this is a colonial door profile, okay? So this would be to match a 600 base cabinet for a kitchen. So that's your colonial door profile cut into there. And then I've cut a five mil deep pocket. So this whole internal section sits five mil lower than the, the actual door face. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna very quickly run through the whole process start to finish, okay? So these are some images of some skirting profiles that I've found online. What we're going to very quickly do is we're going to create some arcs. We're just going to pick up this top face here. Okay. So again, this isn't going to be any by any means perfect. We're just going to very quickly pick up these arcs here. Okay. Then what we're going to need to do is we're going to take all of these arcs and these straight lines and we're going to join them all into one vector in a minute but at the moment we just need to get the basic profile okay there we go so that is effectively our profile so i'm going to come up to layers at the top here and i'm going to hide the bitmap layer and this is what we're left with now one thing I can tell you is we will need to ensure that this line sits perfectly at 90 degrees. Okay. So we're just going to spend, and you'll, you'll see why in a minute. So we're just going to spend a little bit of time redefining this line. Okay. So I'm going to zoom all the way in, all the way in. I'm going to start from this point here. Okay. Come down to this point. Right, I'm going to come over to here. So you can see angle under cursor point. We've got angle. We want to get that to bang on zero. Okay, and you can see that this line here is ever so slightly out. So if I press it, what I've done is I've. Okay, sorry about that. I accidentally pressed um, the escape key and the escape key stops the screen record so i need to remember i've got to go in and out of nodes by um by the end button on the short on the keyboard right so anyway so we're going to select our little squiggly wiggly line we're going to press n on the keyboard and that's going to bring us into node edit mode and what we're going to do is to the best of our ability we're going to zoom all the way in we're going to bring this line down to meet our new line which we just drew so let's make sure we got none of the smart snapping to turn that off. There we go. So turn smart snapping off. So in theory, this new line now should be a perfect 90 degrees. Now, that will only become apparent as why I've done that in a little while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the first sheet I made. And I'm just going to pinch all of these. I hold down control and press V. No. You need to hold down control and press C. Right. Hold down control and press C. And we're going to come in here, hold down control and press V. Now it's going to give us all of these lines. So what my first objective is to do is to come down into here. We're going to line roughly this side up. And we're going to drag it to somewhere in that region. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try and bring this back so it follows some sort of reasonable shape. OK, so again, I'm not I'm not worrying too much about any of this. It's just purely for example purposes only. So from there, we're going to go into our molding tool path, which is this one over here. OK, we're going to open up molding tool path. Now, what we want to do is we want to select this inner square first. OK, hold down shift and then select our design 
Okay, now this design can be anywhere on the screen. It doesn't have to be here. I'll just put it here for size and purposes. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the gap below the, the toolpath. Okay. And we're going to leave the gap above the toolpath as six. Yeah, right. So just for argument's sake, we have an eight mil ball nose cutter. We've got no clearance pass. Oh, yes, we have, sorry, a 10 mil flat bottom clearance pass. Now, we've got skip flat bottom regions. So this flat bottom here, we're going to skip that with the ball nose, and we're only going to do that with the clearance tool. Now, the reason why I've made sure that's 90 degrees, if it's not perfect 90 degrees, then it will cut twice, once with the ball nose, once with the clearance. Okay, we created some sharp corners. Again, I've never ran this toolpath um, to know that it will give you perfect sharp corners. So bear in mind, we've got an 8 mil um, ball nose going into this. Okay. So effectively, there is the beginnings of our door profile. So what we're going to do now is come back out of here. We're going to deselect all of these. We're going to go into a pocket in toolpath. And we're going to select this inside. And then we're going to cut five mil deep on that inside of that toolpath. And what you should find is it starts to give you drop down front. So this whole intersection sits slightly lower than this outer frame. Okay, so as you bring it around, you can just start to see down here. We've got some different layers going on. Okay, so from here, we can very easily cut an outside profile. Well, to be fair, we don't need to because it's all there. But you can play around with this pocket depth. Okay, so at the moment we've got our cut. You can cut it to 9 mil deep. So say you had a 22 mil thick piece of stock. Um, you could quite happily mill that to 9 mil deep. Okay. And then the swept one. You could change that to meet at, say, 9 mil deep as well. And as you can see, that's really brought all that shape to life. Now, again, these are just rendered images off of VCarve, so you don't get a real, you know, purposeful perspective of everything. You'd have to cut a few test patterns to see. But also what you can do is you can mess around with this shape. Make it slightly narrower. Okay. And then when you go back into your swept profile, I would then say change this for um, I mean V bits. So I've been here in V bits. You can get some really good, um, some really good finishing passes on. I mean this one here uh, is not even set up. Craving bit. No, we we'll go with the ball nose. Again, we change that to a six mil ball nose. Now, one thing I have found is you want to mess around with you want to mess around with your toolpaths, okay? Because otherwise, you'll get really extended run times. So at the moment, that is set for three hours and thirty eight minutes to cut one six hundred by seven twenty door. Just far too much. So we can go into our swept tool pass. We can have a little look at this. So we're not going to go anywhere near nine mil deep on this. We'll go six mil deep. Okay. And in theory, that should start to change our run times already. Okay, so that's three hours forty-five, not by much. So if we double click on here and have a look, for starters, we've got a ten mil step over. Um so I have a six mil bit that's going to give us like 0.6 of a step over you probably go to 25 percent quite nicely and then you'd only be left with tiny little ridges and just the sand okay so again we're skipping our flat sections here so if i reset this just just to double check you can select these tool paths down here so that's our clearance is coming in here and it's going to step down and it's going to clearance and bulk all this out now the one i'm interested in is see this flat ridge here this design is not too big of a flat ridge 
on some of them, you get big, big flat ridges. And I want to make sure that that finished path, finished tool path down here at the six mil ball nose is not messing around with these flat surfaces. OK, it's only going into this detail here. OK, again, we've got our pocket clearance, which is a 20 mil bit, usually set for about 60 percent step over. Again, just to try and bulk that material out. And then again, we've got just a five mil finishing pass just to come in here and clear these inner corners up. So you get a 2.5 mil radius in the corners, which I don't think is too bad. You know, it'd be a hell of a lot worse. So again, just to give it some detail, I'll just go with a four mil step for the center. And what you can get is some nice traditional pocket cut, um, sort of internal frame doors. Okay. So that's just one example. Um, on this sheet, I've done another example, which, like I said, this is um, effectively colonial pattern from, from Spirit and Board. I quite like that. It's quite a nice regal feel. You can imagine having a frame around this door. It'd be quite nice. Okay. So, effectively, that is one, two, three, four, five tool paths. Okay, and that would even cut the outside perimeter of that frame. Now, this one is a bit messy because effectively what you've got is five individual tool paths all using different tools. So, again, you could chop and change it up. So, say profile one and pocket one is the same tool. You could group those two tool paths together. You could even do it. So, these two clearance tools are the same two clearance tools. You group group those tool paths you'd go down from five tool paths to three tool paths immediately okay but um i hope that's of some help to someone out there um yeah let us know let us know down in the comments what you think thank you very much guys take care